Thank you very much, Kairu san. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, my name is Shinji Nakasuka from University of Tokyo, this university. So I'm very happy uh, that uh, so many people are attending this, uh, you know, in this uh, global meeting. So I'm very happy, also very happy that I can see the many, you know, uh, familiar faces. So welcome to Japan again. Okay, so uh, uh, let me take this time to uh, briefly uh, show you the introduction of UNICEF, what the UNICEF is, and the UNICEF's history in Japan. Okay, and the. Uh, as, as uh, Kariru-san said, uh, we had a previous two meetings of the UNICEF Global. The first UNICEF Global meeting was held here uh, two years ago. And the, uh, at the time, uh, we have the fifth nanosatellite symposium, as well as the pre-mix three presentations. And uh, establishment of the UNICEF Global was declared. And the, uh, last year, we had the second UNICEF Global Meeting in the Kyushu Institute of Technology in the western part of Japan. And the other time, uh, we had the mix three final presentations. And now we have the uh, mix three, uh, sorry, uh, UNICEF Global, the third meeting. And the uh, objective of this third meeting uh, looks like this. Uh, we will have the pre mix four uh, presentation sessions. And the, uh, we'd like to review the ongoing activities of the new local chapters. There are many local chapters appearing uh, after the uh, foundation of the UNICEF Global. And the, uh, we'd like to acknowledge new applications for the local chapters. We would like to invite more countries to participate in this UNICEF Global. And we would like to provide a, a, uni a Unizone Global. Unizone is a student organization in the UNICEF, and we would like to promote the similar type of the organization in the UNICEF uh, other countries. And uh, to explore every possibility of using micro nano satellite for scientific, social, and the economical needs. This is more you know, uh, economical or technological or more political aspect. We would like to discuss about that, how to promote uh, the uh, you know, significance of the micro nano pico satellite to the society. That, that should be very important uh, activities. And uh, finally, we'd like to identify and find new aspect of the space science and engineer engineering based on micro nano pico satellites. Okay. And uh, now I'd like to show briefly about uh, what the UNICEF is, because uh, maybe the some people are uh, not familiar with what the UNICEF is. And the UNICEF Japan was founded in uh, 2002 and became NPO, non-profit organization, in 2003. And uh, now we have the 67 laboratories from 47 universities. Many universities are participating. And the uh, 800, uh, more than 800 students, and the two more than 250 uh, individual and the company members are supporting the uh, student activities. And the missions are uh, twofold. Education and human resource training for space development utilization and innovative space technology sees development. And the examples of the activities look like this. Joint experiment such as ALICE, CANSAT experiment, or a joint development of the satellite, and joint education. Workshop, symposium, technology exchange has been held in many areas. And consultation on legal matters such as the frequency, uh, export law, uh, and some, something like that. And the uh, important thing is that within the UNICEF community, each university will should can find some rivals within the community. That rival feeling is very important. Some, something like a competition. Such kind of the, you know, our feeling will uh, motivate them to go, uh, for example, go uh, into the very high level of the technology. And uh, we recently started the UNICEF lecture series because uh, there are many universities in Japan who cannot provide a uh, space-related educational course. And so the UNICEF uh, is now providing uh, such universities with uh, some uh, UNICEF lecture series. For example, I'm teaching the orbital mechanics or attitude control of the satellite to the uh, you know, student who have never uh, done uh, such kind of the lectures. Okay, so uh, this is the uh, activities of the UNICEF. So this shows the participating groups and universities. So as you see that it is rapidly uh, growing since 2002. We have the many uh, groups and universities. And the, uh, one of the activities of the UNICEF, initial uh, phase of the UNICEF was the USSS, University Space System Symposium. In this symposium, Japan and the United States get together in Hawaii, at the Hawaii, 
to you know uh, create a new type of the practical mission, not the, you know uh, paper missions. Very practical mission was created within maybe four or five days, and the final day, you know, each group will present what we'll do uh, from now in one year. And the one after one year, the next USSS, the result will be presented. So this is the framework of the U uh, USSS. And the why this USSS was important is that within this USSS meeting, we have the CANSAT concept uh, proposed by Professor Twix of the Stanford University. Okay, uh, he said that uh, let's make a satellite out of this coke can. He stand up suddenly and uh, with with a uh, you know a coke can with in his hand and he uh, you know shouted like this. So this is the birth of the CANSAT concept, and this was uh, this w happened in 1998. And the next year, in 1999, he proposed the CubeSat. So the CubeSat was initially proposed in this USSS. Okay, and the, uh, many Japanese universities have been performing the CANSAT experiment since 19, uh, 1999. So maybe as you know, the CANSAT is very small, called can size satellite, and into which the students should implement all the satellite bus function, as well as the mission function. And uh, bring uh, this kind of the cancer to the United States to launch uh, to the four kilometer altitude. And uh, during the descent, a lot of experiment can be performed. So this is a you know uh, cancer training. And so this provides the student with a very good training material for developing the small satellite, okay, as well as for project management and so on. So uh, this has been the very important training material in Japan uh, for the student, okay. And uh, this Alice. Uh, look at launch for international student satellites started in 1999 and maybe as you see uh, in times uh, more and more universities uh, participating from Japan okay and the we have a very small number of the universities from the USA or Korea or other countries okay now uh, more than 100 students uh, bring their cancer to the United States to do this kind of the field experiments and we did the cancer workshop in 2007 and at the time, we you know invited many countries, uh, with not only the United States, Japan, but also uh, from uh, uh, European countries, India, and other co countries. And uh, because of this kind of the CANSAT, uh, many universities, uh, many countries started the CANSAT training. And the, uh, sorry, uh, we have strong desire of educational support from Japan uh, to emerging countries in the CANSAT framework, and so. Uh, we started the CLTP, maybe as you know, the Cancer Leaders Training Program in 2011. And the, until now, we already have a five uh, CLTP meeting. And this year, we are now preparing for the sixth one, uh, CLTP six. And as you see, the many you know countries have been participating in the CLTP. So in this CLTP, we are inviting the teacher level, uh, you know, uh, engineers or professors to Japan. And uh, we will teach them how to teach the cancer uh, uh, for about one month. And at the end of the you know uh, meeting, uh, at the end of the uh, training, uh, we will have a, uh, we had a, a field test using the you know balloon or rocket or some you know uh, drone and so on. And the after they come back to their home country, they started the cancer education in their own countries. So this is the framework of the CLTP. Okay, and uh, now. Uh, based on the, this kind of the cancer training, the many universities started the satellite development uh, since 2000. And the, uh, in 2003, world first CubeSat was launched by University of Tokyo, our university, and the Tokyo Institute of Technology. These were the uh, uh, two of five initial uh, CubeSat in orbit. And the uh, important thing for the CubeSat is that the we can develop the satellite within the very small uh, budget, such as a 30K US dollars for one satellite. And the development time sh uh, was within the two years. And we expected uh, that the, uh, you know, this CubeSat will survive in space for about uh, two months. But fortunately, it has been surviving in space for more than uh, ele uh, 12 years. Last week, we had a 12th anniversary of the launch of a CubeSat. Okay, and so in this way, if you make a satellite, you know, uh, in, in a very good fashion, then you can uh, expect that your satellite can survive in space for long, long years. And the not only the satellite development, also the ground operations, frequency acquisitions, launch opportunities, search process, 
has been you know, uh, gained by ourselves uh, through this process. So uh, triggered by these successes, many universities in Japan started uh, the development of the micro nano pico satellite primary for the educational purpose, but some universities are already went you know above uh, edu just the education but go into the more practical applications and so these are the you know uh, fleet of the you know uh, satellite which has been launched within the UNICEF community. We already have a uh, 34 uh, university satellite launched uh, from Japan. And the, uh, many universities uh, start from CANSAT, CubeSat, and then NanoSatellite, and some universities uh, uh, from educational purpose to practical application already started. So this is the current status of Japan. And so these are the you know, uh, distribution of the uh, launch opportunity, uh, launch, of how can I say, launch at the media uh, for these 34 uh, university satellites. Uh, we already uh, used the foreign rockets such as the Doniper, uh, Cosmos, PSB, and the Lokot, and as well as, the of, of course, the Japanese rocket uh, has been used, uh, Mu-5, H-2A, and HTB uh, delivered our satellite to the ISS, International Space, uh, Space Station, and the ISS will deploy our, uh, you know, CubeSat. And the uh, JAXA has been helping us for activities. So we are very much grateful to the JAXA for uh, providing us with this kind of the very good launch opportunity. So these are the uh, launch side. And so this is a very memorial picture uh, taken from ISS. Two small satellites, RAIKO and FITSA, the Japanese University Satellite, were uh, deployed from the ISS in 2012. That was the first uh, deployment of the CubeSat from ISS. And uh, now, uh, many, you know, uh, you know, CubeSat uh, have been, uh, you know, deploying, uh, deployed from the ISS. Okay, so uh, another activity of the UNICEF is a ground station network. That is, uh, you know, ground stations are connected uh, via internet. And, uh, for example, uh, we can use uh, the ground station of the Würzburg University uh, via internet, or, you know, uh, Kiruna uh, University, uh, Kiruna's uh, Luria uh, Technology Institute of Technology's ground station via internet. I, if you use this kind of the system, we can enlarge the launch uh, operation opportunity of our satellite. So this is a very important activities. And uh, now we already have a lot of experiment uh, together with uh, Germany, Sweden, and the United States, and so on. Okay, so this is another activity of the UNICEF. And every year, uh, UNICEF uh, is holding the uh, no Noshiro space event. Uh, in the northern part of Japan, every summer, uh, you know, many universities in Japan who are doing this kind of satellite uh, activities as well as the rocket activities get together and uh, to test their, you know, uh, how can I say, rocket or the satellite. So uh, this is another very important activity because you can see the behavior of other universities. This will give the un each university additional motivation. Okay, we should not, you know, uh, uh, we, we want to win against that university and so on. This kind of the rivalry feeling is further uh, enhanced in this kind of the event. Okay, so uh, it goes with us saying this kind of the practical, practical, uh, you know, satellite project uh, gives uh, educational, very big educational significance because the student can learn the uh, whole cycle of space project, not only the only the design or only the fabrication, only the paperwork is not enough. They should learn everything. Then they can know what is important, what is not so important. This kind of thing is very important. And also, it is very important for educa uh, engineering education because the student can get a feedback from the real world, okay? And also, uh, it can provide the student with a very good uh, project management uh, education. So time, human resource, cost and risk, there are four important uh, management tasks, and uh, these can be uh, you know, trained uh, by the students, tra trained to the students, okay? And the, uh, we already have uh, many you know, uh, you know, UNICEF students uh, graduated from graduating from the UNICEF universities. Uh, they are now working very hard, and they are providing a very good contribution to the, not only the space field, but also in many other fields. Okay, so the effect were found more than expected, I can say. Okay, so now I, I'd like to briefly uh, show the, uh, our university, University of uh, Tokyo's history of micro-nano-pico satellite development. 
uh, so as I said, we started the CubeSat development in 2000 and launched our the world's first CubeSat in 2003. This satellite, this satellite is still working in space, and uh, we launched our second satellite in 2005, third satellite in 2009, and fourth satellite, Nano Jasmine, is now waiting for the launch. This is astrometry, very sophisticated satellite. And uh, four years ago, we started a Photo Yoshi project uh, to create more practical satellite and to test uh, more practical application of the micro satellite. And we already launched seven satellites successfully and when one waiting for launch. And the total 31 years uh, operation on Nobit. And so let me briefly show the uh, latest you know, uh, launch, launch satellite, uh, that is the 3 and 4, which were la launched last June, uh, last year's June. And the, uh, the left is the Hodo S3 and the right is the Hodo Yoshi 4. And the, so after the launch, they could obtain a very good pictures of the Earth uh, with a several different uh, resolution. This is a you know, uh, lowest resolution camera, 240 meter. Uh, this is a, a picture of the Sri Lanka. And so this is the highest resolution, 6 meter uh, GSD at Chiba, the Japan, one of the Japan area. Okay, so uh, from the UNICEF, uh, you know, activities, the University of Tokyo could obtain this kind of the expertise to develop uh, the satellite. Okay, and the, uh, finally, I'd like to show what realized the UNICEF achievement. UNICEF, what the UNICEF, importance of the UNICEF. UNICEF provided the university student with something like a platform, opportunity to observe and exchange what other universities achieved and how which is leading to strong motivation. As I said before, we can do something similar, or hints of achieving something, or competing feeling, library feeling. If they can do, we can do it better, better than them. Every university thinks like that. And the highly, mot but in order to you know, uh, make this uh, effective, highly motivated leading persons, such as the professors, continually have had to consider what they can achieve even without enough so resources because the university is generally poor. Our university is still poor, okay? So uh, within the very limited resource, what you can do within such kind of the limited resource, that is very important. That kind of the thinking is very important, okay? And the, uh, finally, I, I'd like to give you the two announcements. The first one is uh, ISTS meeting. So we will have a very big uh, space uh, international symposium next week. And uh, within that ISTS, we will have the nano satellite symposium as one session. And uh, so uh, I, I am the uh, program chair of this ISTS. And uh, you know, theme of this ISTS is Space Voyage Frontier for Better Life on Earth. That means uh, you know, space is, of course, the stage for the voyage or frontier. But in addition to that, space can be used for making the better life on us. So that concept is very important. And we already have more than 1,200 people. And as I said, the nano satellite, six nano satellite symposium will be held as one session of small satellite. We already have uh, about uh, 90 people. And the, uh, in this uh, symposium, on the first day, Monday, we will have the World Space Highlight 2. That is the easy access to space. That will accommodate uh, the micro, micro nano pico satellite activities as well as the rocket suitable for launching such kind of the small satellite. And this is a plenary session uh, on the Monday. And the, uh, I understand that we have many events like that. And the also another announcement is that uh, as to the uh, nano satellite symposium, as you know, we already have uh, uh, five nano satellite symposiums. The fifth one uh, was held at the University of Tokyo uh, last year, uh, two years ago. And the sixth symposium will be held, as I said, in the ISTS Kobe next week. And the, we already have the plan of the, you know, uh, seven, eight, nine, six, tenth. The seventh symposium, nano satellite symposium, will be held in the Turkey in 2016. And so I'd like to introduce uh, Professor uh, Rast uh, Rastam Asran. He will, okay, so he will be the chair of this, uh, you know, Turkey uh, symposium. So. Okay, and the A symposium will be held in I as the one uh, session of the ISS again in 2017, somewhere in Japan. And the ninth symposium already decided it will be held in Australia in 2018. Okay, is there someone from Australia here? Oh, <laughs> Sean. Okay, so he is, okay, please, please stand up. He is, he, he is one of the organizers, uh, Sean. Okay, thank you very much. 
And the, also the tents will be held in ISS again. And uh, now uh, we don't have, uh, you know, 11s yet, not yet. And so if you have some proposal, please uh, let me know. Okay, so uh, finally, I'd like to conclude my uh, speech uh, by showing that the program outlining uh, Premic 4 activity report from countries and so on. And so I'd like to encourage, encourage all of you to learn from other countries' activities, strengthen the community with the same direction. Maybe I, I think that we are going to the same direction. And it, maybe uh, another one is that you should find liables and collaborators. We are doing that within the university, between the university, but also the some countries, you know, some rival relationship, okay? And uh, we encourage you to improve your technology by discussion or hearing the other you know, the, uh, countries' activities. Okay, so uh, I, I hope that uh, this third UNICEF global meeting will be very fruitful. Uh, and in order to do that, uh, please have a very good discussion within the symposium. Thank you very much.